And you reminded me of that by asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was also thinking about uh, messing with my um, my background, but I'm not very good at that. I don't even know how to change my background. Uh, I think I did it before the meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you can do it in the meeting as well. Mm -hmm. Remember, really. Let's see. But you're recording, not live streaming now, right? Because we're yeah. testing. <laughs> right. but this not, yeah, this is definitely not live streaming. Yeah. So. At the moment. Yeah. I did you? Go excuse ahead. me. Did, did you two want to talk a little bit before? I can sure. leave the meeting. Oh, and no, come back. nothing private for my part. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, we're just testing everything. I think everyone's coming. Yeah. Um, let's see. I will try to. Okay. Yeah. You will. When you make me co-host, I can try to share my. Oh yeah. Let me do that for sure. And I just have a question. Um, how does like Birit's background, it seems like maybe I don't have a really strong signal and it could just be, you know, international zooming. It could be me. Do, do, is there any lag when I'm talking? Because I could try and find a better place in the house. All right, sounds perfect. Oh, thank you. Okay. Good to know. Could I change my background, maybe? Ah, oh, your background looks fantastic, I think. Okay. <laughs> Completely up to you, but um, I think it's just cool. And I wanted to change my background to something from my studio because the other, the rest of you have these wonderfully creative images. I, I do have a painting of mine in the distance back there, but I, I have a more interesting, you know, like picture I could have of my studio recently, and I'm not very smart about if you open your Zoom, you know the first window, which is not uh, the, the sign-in window. Then you can go to settings yeah. in the right corner and there you can choose background. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, I'm in my settings. I have a, what, a window that's already open for settings. So would I have to leave our meeting though to do that? I'd, I'm not think? sure. Yeah. No. Maybe next time I'll met. Okay, I'm trying to share Thanks. now. I have two screens. That's the problem. I'm I'm worried that I will share the wrong screen, but I'll try. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yes. You see the full There's screen, the right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if I, I use the arrows, do I change? No, I don't. How to change the photo? I think yeah, there. To, there you have to be. I see your cursor. That there you go. Yes. Okay. So it's mm -hmm. just about choosing the right because I have double screen now when I have my home office here. So okay. Totally. No, I understand what you mean. Yeah, for sure. That's great. Now I always yep. know. I mean, I'm getting very familiar with the exterior of the Huerta Museum. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been a while, but I love that. You know, it's like yeah. the recognition. But um, uh, I used to show sure the, the back side that you see when you come from the station. Now it's the front side with the square. Yeah, yes. that's great. So I, I will share mainly, it's 20 photos from an uh, event, a weekend that we had at the museum mm -hmm. uh, yeah. with a focus on technology and creativity. And then in the end, there will be three photos from this Saturday's uh, performance festival. Okay, great. So it's all from the house or outside the house. Mm -hmm. yes. Will you remind me of your job title at Huebda again? Um, I actually don't know in English, but I mean, I'm curator for the residency, but also for um, programs and uh, 
collaborations, art education. So I don't know my title mm -hmm. really in English. In Swedish, I would say intendant for me at least. It's like curator for kind of not really mediation. I don't know the word in English, so sorry. Outreach? Is it related to outreach? Yeah, education. kind of. Residency. Yeah. And Thomas is the curator okay. of exhibition exhibitions. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Let's see. I'm just going to grab. more information oh, hey mandy i really love your new haircut super cute yeah oh there it is adjusting the lights mm -hmm. everybody's working on their little environment it's great <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the snow. <laughs> it went back to <laughs> it went back to the uh, folding project. Don't you have a light in front of you, Barrett? Oh, Mandy, I would love for you to have a light in front of you too. Your faces are both a little bit dark, both of you. Are you not in the studio today? <laughs> yeah, I uh, live in a dark place. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. Oh dear. Um, is there a window? Mandy? It's evening. It's oh. also night. <laughs> right. I'm totally thrown off. It's by really our words meta. that are most important, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just thrown off by Meta's background because it's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like high noon. <laughs> well, I don't know. You can also play with changing your background. I'm not very good at that, Mandy. I was just experimenting and I didn't get very far. Should we hang out for two months or go ahead? Oh, there he is. Yes. You should change your name, Thomas, maybe. Oh, it's nine. Yeah, it's time. Okay. I'm going to transition and add Facebook to our situation here. Welcome to Inspiration and Adaptation. I'm Asia Freeman, Artistic Director of Benel Street Art Center, which is situated on Denina and Sufiak land, a land belonging to the Ninilchik village tribe and stewarded by the Denina and Sufiak people since time immemorial. Today, I'm really pleased to be joined by curators from the Huebda Museum. Meta Muli is curator of residency programs and educational outreach. Um, Thomas Gustafsson is curator of exhibitions and artists, Birith Stenab from Sweden and Mandy Bernard, who is our featured guest today. Mandy is from Homer and she is winding up a two month residency at Huebda Museum. Our theme is cross-cultural threads 
the long-standing connection that we've cultivated between Huevda and Homer, between Bunnell Street Arts Center and Huevda Museum and our northern regions. Cars Cultural Feds is a project, a collaboration and conception of Mandy Bernard and Beatrice Stenup. And they're gonna discuss that project as well as um, Mandy's specific focus on the work that she's developed and what she's focused on during this time at the, at the Huevda Museum. So just to kind of create a context for us, if you will, Meta and Tumas, could you just begin, um, perhaps you could begin Meta by talking about like a recent project and what you've been doing at Huevda Museum. What's the context like in which Mandy has sort of like landed? And of course, that's surely gonna bring out the differences between our communities, but perhaps to some of the connections. Um. When Mandy finally had uh, the opportunity to come to Sweden, I mean, we've been waiting for long for her to to arrive. We weren't sure, uh, even in the last minute, if she was um, able to to come for the residency in Sweden. Um, we've been having the museum closed for a long time, so this autumn has been really packed with uh, activities, uh, which I think is maybe a nice time to arrive that she could um, take part really from the first day, take part of the activities going on and to get a uh, get an idea of the art scene in Sweden and Skövde and uh, um, we've been having a lot of programs going on, maybe almost too much after having closed for such a long time. We've been working hard <laughs> recently. Uh, but I hope it's it benefited the, the residency for Mandy that she could experience more than normally in Kovda. Well, I understand that there are a lot of programs and I think I can relate to that at Benel. It sort of felt like um, when you put the brakes on a train, it's it's hard to do. And then when you, when you get momentum again, these cars kind of come crashing into each other. And I, I would love for you to, to describe a little bit of, about some of those programs. What, what could you share some, some images, perhaps, and descriptions of the projects that, that you've been up to lately? Yeah, sure. I can show some photos uh, that we have from some of, I, I chosen a few projects because there have been many recently. Um, so this is uh, the cultural center, Kulturhuset, where we situate that. In Hovde. It's a house with a library, with an art museum, with theater, restaurant, and a lot of uh, facilities for uh, concerts and so on. Um, and uh, this is um, one event that was taking place a few weeks ago. It was a result of um, three years of collaborations with the dance residency that we did in Hovde. It was a collaboration with the university, uh, which has an approach to game development, but also um, a kind of a national theater organization with focus uh, in this residency on dance and technology. So these uh, three days um, was a result of the collaboration that we had in Skövde for three years. Uh, and it was called uh, technology and creativity. So we had three days of lectures, international uh, researchers. We had workshops for different ages. Uh, we had uh, performances, premieres, uh, exhibitions, talks, um, and uh, yeah, just a lot of uh, different experiences in the cultural center of Skövde and the museum in particular. Um, so I will show you some photos from, from those days, uh, th that weekend when it all took place. Um, so here's um, uh, uh, one of the dance residences and what it resulted in. It's an um, in inflatable costume slash sculpture <laughs> made by SDA. S TM Spaces was one of the groups of residence takers that took place in Hovde and that this is one of the, um, the works that they did. It's like a moving sculpture or a costume. Um, here's some photos from the gallery. And this is what also took place. 
during this weekend. It's Mandy and Berit working together in the space that is also Mandy's uh, studio and uh, kind of an exhibition space as well that has been changing uh, throughout the weeks where when she's been there. So some photos from there. Uh, one of the performances where um, it was called Love Walks when we went outside in Skövde. Um, and this is uh, one of the exhibitors, Ulla Esvik, and uh, he's um, holding a little uh, guided tour in his exhibition uh, called Long Live Death. Um, maybe Thomas will say some words about that later. Um, Bookbinding workshop. And here he's creating um, a world record attempt on the uh, longest book. Uh, it's more than five meter. So um, he did this during uh, this weekend as a performance where the, uh, the audience helped him to turn it around when he was binding the book. And uh, also one of the groups uh, of the resid dance residency that showed their work during this weekend. And this is inside the theater. So this is not inside the museum, but in the same building. Uh, and this is uh, a group called Ongoing Realities, and this, were, this was uh, their premiere show. Uh, and it took place in the whole collection of the museum. And they were dancing along with the artworks where the audience could walk around at the same time. So it was uh, dances happening simultaneously uh, inside the museum. And you could also uh, try uh, their virtual version of the museum. They built up um, the museum together with um, uh, the game development education at the university. And they also, you could also experience dances in uh, virtual reality at the same time as it, it was going on uh, live around you. And here, maybe Thomas want to say some words. This is actually this last Saturday. If he's there. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> OK. Um, I just needed to unmute. Um, yeah, last uh, Saturday, we had a performance festival that was actually scheduled and rescheduled five times. So the first uh, date was in back in uh, early 2020. Uh, and then we moved it and moved it and moved it. But now finally we got to do it. Uh, and this is uh, Malin Kasta, one of five performance artists doing long durational uh, performances uh, for about three hours. Uh, uh, and they were all about, uh, and actually you see Penilla Eriksson in the background, the white uh, fi figure. Uh, <clears throat> and they were all in relation to man and nature uh, and, and topics on that. Uh, so uh, Malin here, she's uh, sort of reading and uh, throwing away all the science that we have regarding how we should uh, do to keep the planet and, and the animals and us uh, healthy and safe. Uh, but rather than doing that, she's just tossing it all away, uh, discarding it because us humans, we know better, uh, or we at least we think we do. So. Uh, 
and here is Pernille Eriksson and uh, Gustav Broms, uh, and they are both doing sort of rituals, uh, including as uh, certain elements from from nature, uh, branches, small trees, uh, dead animals, uh, and they're sort of nurturing but also destroying it at the same time. Mm. So, uh, and, and this was really something that uh, it went on for such a long time. And of course, uh, very few people looked at the whole performance, but uh, there was a lot of people uh, coming and going. And I would say this was the talk of the town uh, last Saturday. Uh, and we had, uh, for instance, 500 guests at the theater parents to a sort of a Christmas show with the, the local dance school and uh, all the kids from the local dance school. So 500 parents were crossing the, the square at the same time as this was going on. And uh, uh, we didn't really advertise it. To, so it was just happening on the, uh, on the spot. And it was really nice. Uh, so uh, yeah. So. Thomas uh, Gustafsson, yeah. the curator of exhibitions there at Huerta Museum, sharing with us these images and Meta Muley. I wonder just uh, briefly if you could um, sort of wrap up this part of today's presentation by telling us what is the mission of Huerta Museum? It clearly, it's a vibrant cultural hub. Does it have a, a certain um, sort of legal or public um, sort of um, mission statement that it's required to uphold it for its role in, in Swedish culture and community? Uh, no, not really. We, we have taken upon our, ourselves to be a small mu museum with big ideas. Uh, and that's sort of the statement. And, and then we have some guidelines, of course, we are uh, inclined to work with uh, the younger audience, with kids, uh, and also uh, issues of gender and, and uh, sort of critique of the, the norms in society. But uh, that's, I would say it's uh, such a big part of uh, contemporary art. So it's uh, quite hard not to focus on those uh, questions. Uh, but we, I, I think uh, uh, we, we like to surprise ourselves and uh, the people of Skövde uh, and going where nobody else has gone before, uh, so to speak, and trying out new things. Yeah. We also like to focus on new artistries, uh, and new artists and upcoming artists and also um, um, both international and very local. So we try to be wide, but focused. <laughs> So just um, as a transition into Mandy's um, sharing, Meta, could you describe how, um, how you came to uh, invite her to Sweden and um, any expectations that you might have had for her residency, just to set things up? It actually started with an, another residency that we worked with since 2014, uh, which uh, is a residency with a focus on a social art practice. And uh, then we had a plan to start a second residency that would be more process based and uh, production based. And um, after being in Alaska, we decided quite quickly that we should start here, which is we should start with Alaska and we should not only do the, 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 the social art practice residency now, but we should start um, the second one because uh, we got very inspired on our trip to get to know Alaskan artists. So uh, we visited both uh, Anchorage and Homer, and I think uh, we, we felt a bit sad not <laughs> being able to bring artists from both places. Uh, but after deciding that we will do this uh, process-based residency in collaboration with you, Asia, and your crew there, we got a um, we got a good conversation about uh, uh, which artists that could be 
possible for residency and uh, we thought Mandy would be a, a, <laughs> a good choice for us and it would be very nice to, to start to work with her in our new residency and we didn't really know what to expect. That was the fun part. We had no idea of the outcome. And uh, it was also, uh, I think it's been nice in one way that it's been taking so long so that she had opportunity to create a collaboration with Berit. Because we also didn't plan that from the beginning, uh, but it has become a deep collaboration between them too that we are very excited about. So it, it yeah, we, we did know nothing. Or what do you say, Thomas? <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Uh, it was sort of trial and error. And uh, <clears throat> I would say that I, I feel very glad uh, that of the outcome. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to see Mandy go. Uh, would love to keep her. <laughs> well, that that's a, quite a nice, long, and generous sort of drum roll for for Mandy Bernard. Welcome so much to Inspiration and Adaptation, Mandy. You've been patiently um, waiting there. I I know um, it's been a big it's been a big proposition. You've waited for a long time to get there. You've been there for a while. You're an artist with a lot of ambitions and a variety of different skills, and you've really embraced this experience. I, I know that from our, you know, um, previous conversations. But um, tell us uh, a little bit. Um, I wish we could sort of um, go back to the beginning of this presentation where we hadn't seen a thing about Havda, and you could just share a little bit about where you were in your studio process and your conception of like, what what drew you to apply to this residency? Why did you want to go to Webda? Um, I think there were there were a variety of reasons. First, it was it was really nice um, this uh, kind of unique opportunity that Meta and Tomas got to actually come to Alaska and I could meet them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so often we're applying to residencies or exhibits for things um, that in a vacuum uh, over email and we have no idea really what we're getting into, but that was, um, uh, they stood in my studio. <laughs> we talked about um, things in, in Webda and then of course, you know, they had a presentation at Banel. So that was, that was nice and they, and I, um, it is a a big uh, commitment of of time and um, emotional energy and risk and all of that to to go across um, the world for two months and uh, especially now. So that certainly made me more comfortable to have met them and and felt like we we knew each other and um, I wasn't applying to just some mystery opportunity. Uh, so that was appealing to me. And I've um, had this, uh, I think it might be a personal investment now. I'm going to call it that. Um, I had had some background with Scandinavia previously um, in college. I studied abroad in Finland for a semester. So Sweden, the next door neighbor, um, is was also of interest. And and there are a lot of similarities. Uh, certainly, certainly many differences. But um, Scandinavia and um, Alaska share a lot of similarities as well. So it felt familiar in that context. Um, and I, I think some of um, what Meta and Tomas were sharing that, that I've experienced here, I, that was something that was, I wasn't really sure what to expect either in terms of how the residency would um, uh, look. I knew that it was process-based um, and new information about the museum from their presentations and, and online and all of that, but you don't really know until you get here. And I've just been so blown away by uh, all the different things that are happening. And I keep laughing because almost everyone I meet is sort of apologizing for how small Hevda is. And I was like, this is a big city compared to Homer. <laughs> and there's, I'm, I just, um, yeah, it's it's really impressive, and 
the entire um, uh, culture house is not something that we have in America. It's um, it's great. You have everything under one roof <laughs> and a lot of synergy between those different entities, uh, between the theater and um, the art museum and the library. And there's a cafe so you can have your coffee. It's, it's, uh, it's very nice. That's so super exciting. So maybe these are some things that um, you've you've thought about um, ad nauseum. But really, what did you what did you need from Puebla when you applied as an artist working, you know, in the quietude of Homer, the way you've described it, you know, a much smaller community? What did you really need or envision that you might get from your experience of going to Puebla? Um, yeah. So that. It also is, uh, yes, thank you for bringing me back to that. Um, for anyone watching or not familiar with Homer, um, it is quite a small isolated town and my um, practice in, I have a great studio and it's, um, it's, it's an isolated working experience. And a lot of that is, um, uh, some of it is practicality. A lot of it is my personality and, and preference uh, for working, which is lovely, but we shouldn't always, I don't think as an artist, we should always work in a vacuum. It's, it's nice to meet other people and have new experiences that uh, completely change the way that you think about your own practice or the way that you're approaching something. Um, and I feel like I'm fairly solidly in the emerging artist camp. And so I do have a lot um, to gain from those experiences and, and the fact that the museum does have so many, um, so many different things happening from the exhibits to, um, uh, the performances there. And of course, you know, beyond Homer, Alaska, it's, <laughs> um, big state and not, uh, not a lot of some of the same opportunities that you might have in other big cities. Um, so that has been a huge kind of side component of my residency is that not only have I been exposed to so many things here in Huevda, but I've had the opportunity to travel and see, um, I keep telling people, I feel like I've seen more art in the last two months than I have in the last eight years. So that's been really like a, like a fire hose of um, experience uh, that's, it's done a lot for my personal growth and the way I think about my work and, um, and the things that I could be doing. So that's been really wonderful. Thanks, Mandy. Could you, could you guide us through some maybe uh, some images that um, sort of uh, orient us to the exposure you've had there and, and the kind of um, work that you are, the kind of place you're situated in and the work that, that it has inspired for you? Yes, I will. Um, how do I, do I have the screen? Yeah. I just pull it up. You're a co-host, so you just go down to your screen share button, the green button on the bottom of your screen. And oh, right. Okay. You'll see your, your options for that. There you go. Can you see it? Start broadcast. Um, there we go. <laughs> it's counting down. Okay. There we go. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Um, so these are out of order and I don't have a ton, but I will, no, oh, no, I'm not gonna start with that. I'm gonna start here. Um, uh, Beerus and I, as Meta was introducing, um, we had the opportunity, the, um, the museum gave us the opportunity because things had been delayed for so long to uh, have this ongoing dialogue and um, were really gracious in how it was fairly open as to how we approached it and what we wanted to do. Um, and Berith and I had met uh, a few times on, on Zoom uh, long distance. And so we, we continued that with some video meetings and then you know, of course, social media and email and, and all the electronic ways of communicating back and forth about what 
what we wanted to do um, in this interim uh, long distance relationship and had settled on sort of, well, let's just get to know each other and, and our work. And so we, we created a separate account, the cross-cultural threads where we shared some things that were an introduction to each other, but also for anyone follow, following along that was interested, uh, the viewers are seeing both sides of, of Homer um, and Bear's hometown. And we also decided to mail some, uh, some small works back and forth um, between Alaska and Sweden uh, as an introduction to the, the type of work that we did. Um, so in, an introduction to each other through our work. And this piece, um, uh, I am modeling it and, and I photographed it, but Berith sent me some um, wearables with the instructions of, you know, here, <laughs> do, do what you will with it. And so this was my um, response to that, uh, to her. And I will, after I go through some of these photos, would love for her to talk a little bit about um, these pieces and, and this work. Um, and uh, the other uh, piece that she sent me was another um, crocheted wearable that I um, handled in a very <laughs> similar, you know, another, a, um, a photo shoot of sorts. and. I will skip to um, these pieces. Uh, this set in particular has been making an ongoing appearance in our work. And, you know, it was, I will say that's another aspect that once I arrived here, there, there wasn't an expectation. Our, our long distance exchange was intended to be uh, just that long distance. And there was no requirement or expectation that once I got here, that that would continue. But once, once I was here and we could finally meet in person, um, we, we get along quite well and, and work together well and decided to, we have this opportunity that we're both here in the same place, which we was quite a novel experience and decided to continue this collaboration. And it's, uh, it's just been fascinating because the things that electronically and, and communicating and keeping that relationship is, is wonderful. But once we finally met in person and um, of course there's, there's things that are missed. And one of the things Bereth had said was, oh, I was, I was surprised the way that you, you know, you, you just wore it <laughs> and had it um, in that, in that format. And she was talking about having uh when she was packing this piece up and shipping it to me in the mail, that looking at the different colors, which has been a shared theme for us as well, a um, uh, similar color palette that we're drawn to. Um, she was particularly interested in how uh, some of these shapes were coming together. So we had um, uh, filmed and photographed some. Uh, a performance piece with the two of us just working through the movement of folding these materials. And we didn't talk about it beforehand. We set up a camera and just pushed record and started working through it. And it's it's one of the most magical things that I've been involved in, which is uh, was personally surprising for me because I don't have um, a performance background in, in any sense. And, uh, and that's not something that's been particularly in my, in my comfort zone. So it was um, a really fascinating experience for us to go through that. And, um, and again, I'll, I'll have uh, Beareth talk a little bit about that. And that final outcome will be processed later on. Um, but the the entire process of just working through that um, nonverbal communication and anticipating each other's movements and going through this whole quiet ritual um, was lovely. Um, and these, I had sent some pieces to her. Um, I have been focusing on tufting uh, in the last 
two years or so. So had spent her a, a small tufted piece. And then also I am often reusing materials, um, uh, either getting getting things uh, secondhand store and, and finding, creating materials that way, but this also trying to eliminate waste in my own practice and tufting creates a lot of waste. Um, there's a lot of yarn byproduct in that and I've been working with uh, sweeping that up and, and saving it and trying to make new, um, uh, new textiles from that. And so this was another small piece that I had sent to her. Um, and um, I've been working on just uh, making some small films while I've been here of the uh, very, very literal um, handwork that I'm doing and that tactile nature of things uh, that is also in pro process, progress. Um, but this, uh, oh, yeah, I will switch over to this, that this is uh, another aspect of um, the collaboration with, with Birith and I um, looking at uh, movement and form. And again, this color connection that we have. And she uh, had this incredible gift of wool fiber, um, a lot of it <laughs> that we wanted to use somehow and uh, created this um, installation. So Asia, I, I thought of you and um, thought that you'd like to know that I spent another residency nailing uh, things into a wall. <laughs> a, similar, a similar theme of mine. Um, I love that. I, I yeah. appreciate the, the focus that you have on like labor and handwork. And as you guide us through a few more images, which I see you're, you may be poised to do, I wonder if you wanted to <laughs> tell us about, you know, what you feel like handwork has to offer, particularly at this time. What, is, what does handwork um, do for you that is so, um, so important that you continue to like return to it, you know, sewing with a needle and thread or adhering something to a wall one nail at a time. Yes, um, I, personally it is, there's a, a meditation in it. Um, I, uh, that repetitive process is something that's really um, comforting and appealing to me, uh, despite the medium, I've, I've noticed that, that I used to think it was one particular um, type of work that I was doing that was repetitive and, and I'm clear now and understand that no, no, it doesn't matter the medium I will. <laughs> I, I tend to uh, focus and, and dwell in that in the process based things. Um, and I <laughs> had some, uh, Tomas and I were having a conversation today about sort of the uh, the craft and the art and which is, you know, a, a favorite, um, and uh, you know, a common conversation in the art world about that line and and um, the value of each and uh, when does one become the other and so it's been nice when I've been in this space that has a lot of contemporary um, art that uh, and, and a lot of conceptual art. I feel like a lot of the previous um, residents that have come have been uh, either performance or, or conceptual in nature. And, um, uh, <laughs> and then they have this, this craft person that's in their, in their sewing, um, which of course I, I do more of that, but I think that was part of, uh, I think the, the appeal to them and, and that residency, uh, this particular process-based residency was for the public to be able to see someone the um, the labor and the, the time and the detail that can go into some work um, so it's it's nice that 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 does continue to be a, a thread in my work and and an interest um, regardless of of how I'm branching out and of course having those um, uh, more conceptual experiences and and seeing that these two things, 
can intertwine. They're not exclusive. Um, and I think that's been a, the biggest um, growth, po growth point for me in this residency that um, thinking about uh, my, my skills and my work um, of being capable of doing things in a in a bigger, less literal way, while still incorporating a lot of those um, hand skills that I have. Wonderful. Thank you, Mandy. Um, I'd like to shift to Beirut while we're still in kind of proximity to the fascinating images of yes. works, um, which you um, explored with her through um, folding and unfolding, because Beareth has recently sent a description of her intentions for her residency in Homer, which is coming up in February and March um, of 2022 at Benel. And so we're delighted to welcome Beareth also to this conversation. And um, maybe, um, it, Mandy, you could just pop back to the, the first image she sent you, which you wore as a mask. And, um, yes it's just convenient since these works are here. Beatrice, could you tell us what, um, what you were thinking when you created this and uh, any, any hopes or expectations you might've had for, for Mandy and, and how she might relate to it? Uh, yes, I will try to um, talk about this piece. Um, I've been very interested in masks for a long, long time. Um, it's been with uh, humans for such a long time in many, many cultures. So that is my first sort of uh, entrance to the mask making. Um, and uh, recently masks <laughs> have been very, very present uh, during the pandemic. We have been forced to, to wear masks and uh, I, as I understood it uh, you have been uh, in a position in, in um, Homer that you really had to wear those masks uh, more than we did in Sweden so I thought that if I sent this piece uh, it could represent the time that we have been uh, having the past two years uh, but I also wanted um, uh, Mandy to sort of do whatever she wanted with it. I think I wrote in the note that, uh, to Mandy that <laughs> <laughs> she could do whatever. She could change it or add because I also use the, re uh, the sort of used materials that I throw away. So we are both similar, similar in that way. So, and I was really curious what you were going to do. And I was so thrilled, mm -hmm. Mandy, that you put the mask on and you did this beautiful movement uh, se sequence. Do you say that? The sequence? Yes? Yes. Is yes. that the word? Yes. Yeah. The, how you uh, had this red light that sort of... Um, so, uh, what was it... Uh, uh, a sign of this time, sort of the red, the red alert, the red light, and uh, yeah, I like this. Uh, I like this so much. When you sent it back, I was, I was uh, blown away. You were so beautiful, also in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you know the masks, and initially were just so uh, disorienting for all of us to wear, right? You know, creating this, concealing our smiles and the ways in which we can connect. But you've created this incredibly porous mask, right? You know, like air and light gets through it and it doesn't, it really wouldn't do anything to block like germs. And so it, <laughs> and it's, and it's worn by Mandy, you know, like against the bare skin and she just shows even more skin and the intimacy of this lighting really speaks to like mm. that, that, that goal to connect and to kind of um, make visible the connection instead of the barrier between bodies and people and art practice. Mm. Yeah, that's powerful. To guide yes. us uh, the 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 image um, 
the images of the the folding um the folded works i see one behind you and and those are probably your hands engaged in <laughs> in your in your um screen you know background but uh, mandy has provided some other images of those works that tell us a little and i bit can about take yeah. this off i just don't know how <laughs> get the screen share off Oh, do you want to go to um, maybe just go ahead to the images of the folding project and Beardith could just. Okay, sure. Yeah. Beardith, if you could tell us about the, um, the, the thought behind this kind of intimate choreography of gestures that are engaged. Uh, I think Mandy described so well how it all started. I was going to put this in a package for to mail it to uh, by po uh, post uh, po post it to Mandy overseas. And while I tried to make it smaller, I tried in different ways. And then suddenly there were all these patterns uh, uh, sort of showing uh, in the fabric. and. And I took some pictures. I think, I, think I, I folded this like 30 times and took mm -hmm. as many photos of it. Then I thought, this is something we could uh, explore maybe together. Uh, but I sent it to Mandy and she wore, wore it. And uh, she, she took this beautiful photo in the corn field. And mm -hmm. it was lovely to see. So, but then when, when uh, we met uh, one morning in the museum, uh, as Mandy described before, we, we just sat down and we were on each side of the uh, fabric and um, the garment really, it's a garment, you could wear it, but it's also a fabric, you could unfold it and all. Um, and we started to just, I don't know, it just happened for a long time that we didn't speak. We just uh, had a like a med meditation or a, or a dance with our hands and we just followed each other uh, in deep concentration and no mm -hmm. words. And so very, very, it was a very, very good moment. And uh, this sort of, uh, made me think about how to connect with someone else without words because I'm so interested in the daily movements we do, how they are sort of choreographies in our daily lives and also I thought this could be something that I could work with when I come to home or sort of fold people's clothes and through that get to know people who are living in Homer and uh, maybe connect through stories of the, the thing we're folding or just by the movement. Uh, I think uh, I think many many good stories and sad stories could come out of this and connections mm -hmm. without words. Yeah, that's fascinating. You have great English, but I know that it must be very intimidating. Uh, certainly it is for me when traveling abroad and having, you know, an immersive time in residence, practicing um, a language that's not, not your first language. And so it makes a lot of sense uh, that you would, um, as an artist, sort of derive a process which is material and um, also um, you know, striving to deepen connection without words, because dance is also one of the forms. It seems movement is really, um, you have a, a lot of history in that. So we're really looking forward to your residency, Berit, and I really appreciate that introduction to your thoughts. Um, so Thank maybe, you. Let's, um, let's return to um, to you and, and the kind of um, revelations and processes that have been uh, part of your um, residency. What um, what do you feel like you're learning in in Cuebda that um, you really you know you really um, are ready to learn that you you know that you've been embracing in terms of your practice and your concepts. Uh, well, I said I it's 
exposure has been, I think, one of the, the biggest things um, for me, having, having seen more, more performances and uh, visiting more um, galleries and exhibits than I have seen, um, yeah, probably even with, with travels outside combined um, in the past several years of living in Alaska. So, and of course, a lot of, a lot of Alaskans travel outside to, to experience more of that. Um, so this is like another extension of that, except that I got to live here for two months. So um, meeting people and having them say, oh, well, there's this you know, you have to see this exhibit here at this museum, or there's this person that you should talk to here. That's that's hugely valuable with the residency. Um, yeah. So I, I think that you know I I was uh, have been talking to a friend and said you know this is I I am I'm full. <laughs> I have um, so many uh, experiences and. Um, and new ideas and new ways of thinking of things. And, um, and I, I need to, I will be processing that for some time <laughs> and it's, and it's still fresh and ongoing. I still have like six days left. So it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still working over, um, a lot of that and will be for some time, but. Could you return to that image of, um, the kind of serpentine form under the cloth that you are kind of sewing into the cloth while you're talking about that idea of yes. feeling really full. And of course the image that the, the, the images you've shown also relate to it, but it, it really does make me think about, you know, I know you to be an artist who's very deliberate and very thoughtful and strategic in how you um, explore and build a project. And it, it, it just, I, I thought, you know, of, of like the, that snake who swallows um, a lot and that has to digest for a really long time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm looking at this image of like this snake sort of emerging through the fabric or going back yeah. to the previous image where you see through fabric that, that some other kind of tufting or organic grasses coming through an opening, you know, it's like, again, refers to, to fullness. And um, yes, it's, it's really fascinating. The, the other thing that I, I wanted to, to talk to you a little bit about is that, that marvelous duality between retreating and revealing that is so important to your practice. Yes. Uh, it's surfacing more and more, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a necessary evil. <laughs> I don't know that I, I would always describe it like that, but it's, I, I probably have described it that way in the past, but it, but it has not felt like an evil this time. Um, it really is. Uh, and, and you, Asia, know and, and have uh, helped me process and, and work through things before. And I've had some of these sort of discrete opportunities that have popped up and, and each time, um, you know, sort of been uh, interspersed in my quiet home or life. And, and they're hugely valuable and I think I can point to things that I'm doing in my work now that have come directly from each of those experience experiences um so this one uh having having been so full <laughs> on this on this one um I'm I'm really excited certainly yeah um you know Thomas and, and Matt were speaking about the the sort of challenge they've set for themselves to be you know um a place, you know, of ideas and surprises. And I think about, you know, what strengthens performance art is the, the really, um, the subjectivity of the performer, like the, the, in, the um, idiosyncratic nature of just how and what is revealed. And it's not at all because a person might be attracted to the, the limelight, but that they're struggling with that visibility. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm really thrilled that, you know, that you're, just uh, embracing that struggle and <laughs> a struggle to be a part of creative grist, you know, and, yeah. and growth. So um, what do you feel like, um, what else will you take away from this, um, this experience when you describe, just, just to unpack a little bit more the fullness, um, mm. talked about the fullness of all of your exposures 
the fullness of, of, of collaborating and responding to people's suggestions for what you should see. Um, yeah. What are some other really strong images or ideas that um, you're taking from, from Kvavda, from, from Sweden or your travels mm -hmm. that, that resonate? Yeah, I, I didn't, um, you know, these couple of images here that I, I came into the residency again, it was fairly wide open um, and I had some, some loose plans because I wanted to be able to adapt knowing that, you know, I might have something in mind, but when I get here, that could all go out the window once I learn the community and, and the space and, and everything. And, um, and it did. And I <laughs> uh, had traveled with so many materials, not knowing what I would find here or, or what I wanted to do. And, and I did use uh, a decent amount of them and then incorporated things from Fuebda too. So I, I did have some, um, some specific goals for uh, techniques and things that I wanted to spend time with while I was here or experiment with for the first time. Um, and I got to, I got to do those. Um, but it was not the, the focus and the center of my residency as I thought it might be because these other opportunities were so much more important because of their, their timing and availability. And this is like a, <laughs> you have this opportunity to do this right now. And um, I had some conversations with Tomas and Meta about that shift as well of my um, a productive day in the studio at home might be sitting at the sewing machine for eight hours or, or stitching for a long time or, or doing something and, and coming into a process based residency I think I sort of had that in mind of, of that might be the expectation or, or that's what a successful day will look like um, and quickly realize no 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 that's that's not they don't want me just sitting here in the studio space nonstop either because you're in this new place to uh, to interact with the community and other people here and, and to have an experience outside of those four walls. And so there was a good mix of, of that. Um, I did have this lovely studio space in the gallery and um, that I produced some work uh, in that I'm excited to explore further when I come back. Um, and create more in a series that I'm really excited about, um, but had that that other, all of the other interactions as well. And I, I think the, you know, the the biggest things beside the, the experience and, and all of that, and of course you have um, culture shock that you're anticipating or, or cultural differences that you are are aware that there will be some. Um, but I think the uh, the biggest thing for me that I wasn't um, expecting or I, I didn't really know or understand before coming here, but have just been so um, uh, impressed and I, yeah, I don't even, I don't even have the words, but the, the um, structure and interest in supporting arts in Sweden is hugely different from that that we have in the US. Um, and of course, there's, um, there's different <laughs> political systems um, and different uh, social support systems in place that, that automatically make our, our countries very different in how they function, how they're able to do these things, but beyond the types of um, government funding or or other private funding for the arts um i think just the the attitude of of support for artists as um needing to be compensated for their work and their time financially as important um is uh definitely a different uh felt like a different part of culture that we don't experience at home um and was pretty pretty eye-opening to me to just see how um, knowing the the kind of struggles that we have in our state in Alaska with any kind of um, funding to support the arts but in you know beyond Alaska within the rest of the country as well so that's um, that was really really valuable to see another system and and how they value their artists and um, 
the way those artists are able to uh, to work within the museum um, and people because of that and the um, the type of things that come out of that it's it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's pop out a screen share if you will, Mandy, for the yes. the last part of our conversation here to just experience the the room together. I really want to thank you all so much for joining me. And as we kind of conclude, um, Mandy, um, what do you what do you feel like Alaska does have to offer, given the much more um, friable structure, if you will, the, the apparatus, the uh, the connections, the threads or ladders and mortar that, that creates our art ecosystem. It's so different. Um, and um, what does Alaska offer that sustains you? What I you think, back to? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, at the beginning, I was, <laughs> I, I have come full circle when I first arrived, I thought I'd never want to leave. And, and now that I've been here two months and the holidays are coming, I'm, it's time, I'm ready. I, <laughs> I need that quiet time to process. <laughs> I don't think I can um, absorb anything else at this point. So it's, uh, it, which is good, because, you know, I have to go back. But um, I, uh, I've only been a visitor here for eight weeks, so um, I don't really know, but Melissa and I have had some conversations about this, and um, Tomas, I think, to some level of, of trying to get to understand Huevda and the community, and um, uh, I mean, obviously, it's different in a lot of ways, but also that um, I think one of the things that's been just so fun and lovely about visiting Europe <laughs> is the public transportation, of course, and that you have a rail system and it is so easy to get places and, um, and move around. And, uh, and that's great. But with that, you have, um, there, there's a lot of migration just for daily work, and uh, you know the the museum is is staffed by um, people that don't all live in Huevda, and I think uh, Huevda, um, some of the other businesses as well. You know, it's it's been hard to kind of piece through of like, well, who lives here? Is this a bedroom community? And um, and and all of that, and so Homer and um, all of Alaska, you know, it's a it's a a big state and a small population, and it feels like the uh, the art world is um, quite small in Alaska, and that has, of course, pros and cons. But I think that um, uh, the community, it's it's easy to know. Um, who to go to for things um, or to meet people and um, that uh, that small town feeling of of Homer I am I am missing <laughs> for sure and that uh, quiet solitude um, of my own space is something that I'm looking to come back to and the ocean <laughs> I miss the ocean. <laughs> Um, our ocean that's that's uh, freezing and, and washing big salty bergs onto the beach right now. They're they'll be waiting. Yes, for big, and yeah. the three feet of snow that I'm missing out on. <laughs> yeah. It's all here for you. It'll all be here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for this hour and to Meta Newley and, and Thomas Gustafson to Judith Stenab and also to Melissa Shaganoff who's been quietly. Um, in the corner listening um, and embarking on her two month residency. I, I look forward to speaking with you um, next month, Melissa. It's been really uh, great to continue deepening these cross-cultural threads through the work of artists and the vision of curators. I wanna thank you all and, and wish you um, a healthy and happy new year as it approaches and peaceful holidays, productive studio mm -hmm. time all the rest. Take care. Thanks, Asia. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Likewise.